Fun fact, if you look at a global map of where people drink coffee compared to where people drink tea, it's almost split right down the middle. The Americas, North, Central, and South predominantly drink coffee where Europe and Asia drink tea. Interesting to see, but we know the key ingredient in both is caffeine. It's found naturally in the coffee bean and the leaves of tea, and for those chocolate lovers out there, it's naturally found in cocoa as well. But how exactly does caffeine improve athletic performance, and how can we use it to obtain our optimal male physique? In this video, we will look at the fascinating ways caffeine influences our muscles and our brains and determine exactly how we can leverage its benefits. We will sum it all up at the end in a very simple and effective approach for all of us to optimize. All right, so let's get into it. Despite the incredible volumes of research on caffeine, it turns out it's neither the savior nor the villain when it comes to our health and particular athletic performance. It's polarizing in some sense, but scientific studies have concluded clearly that caffeine has certain beneficial effects on muscle development, mental acuity, and, like with all things, can have a negative effect if you take too much of it. First, caffeine is psychoactive. We know this as we all feel a good cup of joe in the morning, at least for those of us in the Americas, will get us out of that sleepy slumber and get us ready for the day. But if our morning routine involves a good workout, that cup of coffee or tea will directly impact our muscles and psych us up for a performance at our peak. What is happening is an increased release of calcium that is embedded in our muscles. And calcium is absolutely essential for muscle growth and development. So, as caffeine travels as molecules through our blood system, it interacts with certain energy receptors in our muscle tissue. Interestingly, caffeine molecules are competing for space on those receptors with a molecule called adenosine. And studies have shown that adenosine connected with our muscle receptors correlates to a lack of energy or lethargy when it comes to working out. So here come caffeine molecules that are in a similar structural shape of those adenosine molecules and attach themselves to our muscle fiber receptors. So the net effect at the muscle level is not that caffeine is stimulating our muscles to fire off, but rather taking the place of the adenosine molecule that has a more limiting effect on our performance. It's like caffeine is acting like a fresh substitute coming off the bench and injecting some energy into the team, taking the place of a tired teammate. The second scientific change happening at the muscle tissue level is that caffeine affects the way our muscles contract through an increased release of calcium in our tissue. When we are lifting weights, our muscles are shortening, contracting. Think of a socket wrench. Our fibers are literally ratcheting at the cellular level to enable us to move that weight. What calcium does is enhance our muscle fibers' ability to grab onto each other in that ratcheting fashion. In a resting state, our muscles are obviously not performing this action, and the release of calcium is not needed at all. But to engage that mechanism at the muscle fiber level, our bodies release calcium, which then triggers action within the muscles supporting contraction. Caffeine, then, has been shown to directly influence the release of calcium in our muscles to help us in athletic performance. In more practical terms, the studies concluded that we are able to contract our muscles with more velocity with this caffeine-induced release of calcium. So we can put that to use in a couple of ways. We can increase the amount of reps we do. This is fantastic for calisthenics or for those days we want to play a game of basketball or soccer with the added energy and endurance. But more directly, it will allow us to use more weight during those times where you're looking to build and progress. Progression is incredibly key for muscle building and performance improvement. To set a goal of lifting just a little more weight than we did previously, caffeine will help us get us there, scientifically. And when we think about muscle, we often forget about the heart. The heart is obviously muscle, but clearly not when we work out directly. As we need nutrients in our circulatory system to reach our muscles for proper repair and recovery, a strong heart will push those nutrients much more efficiently to aid in a more speedy recovery. So as you breathe hard after performing those sets of squats, just know that the coffee or tea you drank pre-workout is also helping your heart to improve the recovery of those leg muscles to push you even faster towards your physique goals. So science has shown undeniable benefits for caffeine and muscle building, but we all know it's the stimulant in coffee and tea that gets us in the mood to do things. And that has also been shown true in studies as well. Particularly, caffeine affects areas connected to working out. First, it suppresses our perception of effort, and second, it suppresses our perception of pain. For effort, studies show that individuals perceived that they were not putting in as much effort during a workout than they thought they were, or 
Simply, they were doing the same amount of exercise, but the caffeine made it seem easier to do. This is really important for us on those days we don't feel like working out, or on those days we just need to take it to the next level. Our mental capacity will be telling us it's not a big deal. Perhaps not easy, but the mental hurdle of starting the workout or crushing the workout will be made easier after consuming caffeine. Similar positive results are with the reduced perception of pain. While this won't get us to start the workout, it will be instrumental for us hitting peak performance during it. The studies show that caffeine directly affects all forms of performance, long-term endurance, mid-range levels of intensity, and HIT or high-intensity interval training all benefit from caffeine, and we can associate pain or the perceived pain in these workouts as the point where we stop. So if your perception is that the pain is less, we can then push through and target our personal goals of improvement. And to be clear, this is not pushing past pain to injury, but rather obtaining the benefits from caffeine to help us get that last rep in, or to increase our weight by another five pounds, or to play that one extra game with our buddies. So to keep things very simple, how much caffeine do we need and when should we take it? Good news is recent studies have shown it's much less than previously thought. At one point, it was suggested that it was five to six milligrams of caffeine per kilogram of weight. So if you weigh 180 pounds, that would be about 500 milligrams of caffeine or five cups of coffee before you work out. Luckily, we don't need that much. In fact, we are being shown half that much will trigger all those benefits we talked about. On the low side, about 160 milligrams of caffeine, and on the high side, about 250 milligrams. We're looking at one cup of coffee or tea, perhaps two. That's right in the sweet spot. It's hard to imagine anything more simple than have a cup of coffee before the workout. And we don't want to overthink things, so have two cups if you want. All right, so how about when? The same study showed caffeine absorption is at its highest point around 45 minutes after consumption. Easy. So half an hour or an hour before you work out, have that coffee or tea. If you like to work out in the morning, this will fit in nicely as you can settle in for a cup of coffee, enjoy it, and then start your workout an hour later. And especially handy if you need to travel to the gym. As with all things, there is a point where too much caffeine can result in negative side effects, or perhaps even unsafe. So we don't want to be consuming vast quantities or doing it all throughout the day. We know this. We also want to be careful at night. Caffeine is a stimulant and stays in your bloodstream for many hours. If you work out in the evening, take particular precautions if you drink coffee or tea pre-workout, as this may hinder your ability to get the sleep that you need that is so crucial for obtaining the ultimate male physique. For more information on the particular benefits of sleep and recovery, check out this video, and we'll see you in the next one.